Hey, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about number systems and measurement. So first, before I get going, I want to recommend Jan Miesli's YouTube channel, which is one of my favorite YouTube channels out there, by the way. In particular, I want to recommend the video, A Better Way to Count, where he goes into great detail about the advantages of a base six counting system. Um, I fully agree with him. I think if we lived in a world where we used base six, it would be a much better world and we'd all be able to do our math more easily. Uh, he goes into a great deal of the reasons why that would be a good system. Um, on his website, seximal.net, he does get a little bit into measurement uh, and his prefixes and the way that those work with the base six system, I think are great. Um, I'd be happy to fully adopt those. The base units, however, um, I'm not a huge fan of the way that he did that. He basically just decided to say, okay, well, let's take the average of a meter and a foot, or I think it was a meter and a yard, and that'll be our base unit for length. Um, a little bit silly, I'm not quite sure why he came up with that. Uh, as such, I'd like to present an alternative for how to do base units uh, using seximal counting. So here are the base units. To begin with, length. Now, in our world, we have the metric system where we have the meter, and the original metric meter was defined to be one ten millionth of the distance from the equator to the North Pole. All right, see, that's what I'm saying. This didn't just come out of nowhere. There was an idea behind what this length would be. Okay, now today they have redefined that into a method that can be more precisely determined, um, is defined by the speed of light and the distance that light travels in a vacuum. That's fine. But my thought is using base six, we can go back to this same way of thinking to figure out what should our base unit be in a seximal counting system. So for now, I've called it the Zeter. I don't know why. I don't have good names for these. I'm open to suggestions for better names for these units. But my definition here is that this unit, the Zeter, would be one six by, by sorry, one six by exienth of the distance from the equator to the North Pole. Now, if you don't know what six by exian is, then again, go check out Jan Misli's video. All right. But what this works out to then is that a zeter is equal to 0 0.992290301275212 meters. And I kept this in base 10 so that we can all think through this clearly. I know, uh, yeah, I'm easily probably would have written this out in base six, but that's not what I did. So that's length. And then of course we would have um, multiples of that. We would have, you know, nifty zeters and, um, and so on. All right, so what about the other parameters? Well, we've got mass, all right? So the original definition of the kilogram or the original thought behind it is that a kilogram would be the weight of 1000 cubic centimeters of water, all right? I've come up with a uh, unit here for now I'm calling it the ZAM. So instead of the gram, I'm calling it the ZAM. I know, I can't really come up with better ideas. Uh, and that is equal to the weight of one by exienth of a cubic zeter of water, zeter being defined up here. And if you do that, then a ZAM turns out to be this number here, very close to a gram, okay? For time, I actually am very happy with the way that Jan Misli did time. Um, so I've just actually adopted his unit right here at the moment, right? So in our metric system, we have a second and the original definition of the second is 186,400th of a day. Uh, and here we have a unit that he called the moment. I just kept his name for it because he already came up with a good name for it. And that's equal to one nif unexionth of a day. And if you're looking for the conversion, one moment is equal to 1.85 seconds, okay? Then we have electric charge, which he doesn't even address, but I figured I would just because, eh, I'm something of a completionist. All right, so originally we had the Coulomb, which was defined based on some scientific -y stuff involving mercury. Look it up on Wikipedia if you really wanna know the details. The truth is that there's not a nice description like these ones have. However, I've come up with one that I think has a better uh, description. So of course I'm calling it the Zulam because what else would I call it? I'm not that great at coming up with names. Uh, and I'm defining that to be the electric charge of an object that experiences an electrostatic force of 
one zam zeter per moment squared when located one zeter from an object with equal charge. Okay, that seems pretty straightforward. And um, if you're wondering what that works out to be, one zulam turns out to be this small fraction of a coulomb. Um, whatever, works out well. You can always add the, um, add the prefixes on if you want to figure out what is unexian zulams or biexian or anything else. Um, and there we go. That's my system of base units. Oh, but wait, you're wondering, what about temperature? What about luminescence? What about moles? Well, guess what? Those aren't base units. I'll leave it to you to figure out why. Have a good one.